fighting for a cause. Here's your look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends House of X, Moira McTaggart. Through the course of many lives and deaths, Moira McTaggart pursues justice for all mutants. Before we get down to the review of Moira McTaggart, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall she stands. Taking the tape measure right to the very top of her head, right there. Stop the tape measure, right there, and reading it to you, the viewing audience. Moira stands 5.7 inches in height. Switching that to centimeters, the figure is almost 15 centimeters, 14.6 to be exact. For some quick size comparisons, we move over Moira, and we can bring in Omega Sentinel that we just had a look at. Clearly, you can see different body builds all together, and Omega Sentinel is a little bit taller than Moira, which I guess really makes sense. I wouldn't want them to be exact same size and using the exact same bodies. Before heading down to Accessory Town, the first thing we'll have a look at is the build-a-figure piece that comes in clue with Moira McTaggart, and that is, of course, one leg. Not two. One leg for the Tri-Sentinel that we're going to be building. Normally, I would accuse Hasbro of really milking their Marvel Legends, throwing in really tiny little build-a-figure pieces with all of their figures, so you have to buy a lot more of them. But I guess in a case like this, all the characters that we're getting, all seven, including Wolverine, that doesn't come included with a build-a-figure bath piece, they're all good characters, so I'm not going to necessarily fault them in this case, but in the past, they've been rather notorious. Let's reach off to the side here and bring in the Tri-Sentinel where we've left off. Yeah. You didn't miss anything. We only really looked at the torso piece that came in clue with the just looked at Omega Sentinel. So really, there's not much that we can build on. Well, there's a whole lot we can build on, but there's not really much that we can see so far. We're going to go ahead and take the leg and we're going to line it up. And in case you're not sure, you don't really have to look at even the instructions. Just follow the same coloring. See the silver on the outside, the purple on the inside. That'll tell you which side the leg is supposed to be attached to. Go ahead and just wiggle this in place. Pop that in place. Boy, that's a lot easier. That's a lot easier than the Bane figure that we had a look at from the DC Multiverse line. But just to kind of give you guys an idea, stretching way past the view of the camera, just how tall the tri Sentinel is going to be. Man, that does look like Prime Starscream. I hope I don't say that every single time. But anyways, that's where we've left off so far. We can move that over. See, again, the fun of actually doing this as we look at each figure. I, I was enjoy more so being able to build these baths instead of just doing it off camera. And then, bingo, bango, we do, do a review of it. Okay, so let's go back to those accessories that we were mentioning earlier. Moira comes in clue with a book. Get a good closer look at the book. I don't know why, for some reason, it doesn't want to focus. Why does it not want to There we go. Didn't want to focus there for a second. She does come in clue with a book, as you can see right here. Uh, it does not open. A kind of bit missed by the fact it doesn't have actually painted pages. They literally just molded all gray plastic and then just printed an image on the outside. I really feel they could have easily gone in there. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time dissing and talking trash about the book, but I really do feel like they could have easily painted the pages. Should we just assume the book has gray pages? I know it's just a small little complaint. She comes, comes in clue with that. And then again, all the other things that she's going to come included with is for her to dress up, or I guess in this case, dress down from her work clothes. With that being said, let's get a closer look at the figure. Don't worry, I'm not forgetting about this. We're going to go back to that in a second, but I want to first show you guys how the figure looks when you get her out of the packaging. Now, she has, like I said, two different looks. This one happens to be her with her lab jacket on. And I really want to praise Hasbro, first of all, for the fact that they gave us the available option. This is always something I always talk about in these reviews, and I always jokingly say this. The fact that the jackets are looking like something you could remove, but then, of course, the problem that goes along with it is that the sleeves of the arms are still going to remain the same plastic as the jacket. Not in a case like this. You can actually take the jacket off, you can actually remove the arms, and you can swap it out with the other arms that she comes included with. Really like that touch. Now, she does have swappable hands. For the time being, I actually just put these hands into these arms because this is the hand, of course, for her holding the book. And the book just sort of fits inside here. So you can have her just sort of walking the halls if you want to. I kind of like this hand, too. I know it's more so considered a gestured hand, but one thing I really like about it, even though technically she can't really pull it off well enough, is I liked at the beginning of this review, and I might even consider displaying her like this, bending in such a way that it kind of looks like she's adjusting her glasses. You can kind of just get the hand barely 
barely bent to the point where it looks like she's actually pushing the glasses back up onto her head. Kind of even looks like she's got a bit of a headache as well. Unfortunately, she only has a single hinge on the elbow, which we'll talk more about that when we look at the figure's posability. It's a bit disappointing that she doesn't only doesn't have the double hinge on the elbow, but again, you can pull off almost that look, almost the look of actually having a look like she's pushing the glasses back up her forehead. I kind of just think that's fun. But looking at the figure's head sculpt, this is going to be one of two different looks for Mora. You can see that she's got the glasses on right here. Normally, plastic on lenses tends to distort the eyes. I feel like it distorts the eyes, but not to the full extent where you can't really see what the eyes look like underneath. The workaround to that, of course, is they could just leave the glass lens off completely and just give you the frame. But I think adding a little bit of the lens, adding the lenses definitely does give you the more look of a real pair of glasses. I don't believe that you can remove these. I don't really know why you'd want to remove them anyways, because if you did want to have them removed, you probably would just revert to having the swappable heads changed out instead. The only thing I would say, looking at this particular head sculpt, while the glasses doesn't bother me, I don't know why, for some reason, the lips, I just feel like they're heavily caked on. Maybe she's somebody that wears a lot of makeup. Maybe she's somebody that wears a lot of lipstick past the point of the lips. You ever know somebody that does that? You don't really want, obviously, you're not going to say anything to them because it would offend them. But you ever see somebody that actually paints their lipstick past the point of their lips? It, I mean, how can you tell, how can you even say to yourself, that's what my lips look like, when clearly you can see the line going way past her, I know I'm going off on a tangent. But I feel like it looks a little bit too full. And she's like, even looking at where the corner of her lip goes, why am I drawing so much attention to this? She almost has like just a regular frown, and yet they've painted the lips where they're higher up. Okay, that's now all I can look at. I don't know what's going on with that. I mean, obviously the way they could have followed the continued trend of the sculpting of the lips is they obviously could have just put the corners of the lips further down, but then it would make it look like she's frowning. So settle on one thing, either have her frowning or have her with, with almost what you could guess to be a smile, but you can't do both. What you do as a result of it is you look like those people that want to paint outside their lips. It doesn't make your lips look fuller. It makes it look like you've painted past the point of your lips. Anyways, that's the only point I wanted to mention. Does have her white lab jacket on. Of course, she's got a little pocket. I would assume that's a pocket protector in there. I can't imagine they're just simply willy-nilly putting pens into their pocket, not concerned at all that there's going to be leaking link. Leaking ink. <laughs> leaking link. But as you can see, like she's got a little couple of pens there in her pockets and a nice, decent-looking jacket. Underneath that is a turtleneck shirt, which, again, you can go ahead and remove these sleeves in a second. But I just want to show you what it looks like all the way around. A really bright-looking jacket, too. Getting little wrinkles there on the back. The legs, as you can see, just bare exposed legs. And she's got herself what looks to be pretty comfortable-looking high heels. These are things that you could probably walk around in eight hours of a workday and not have tired-looking... Uh, what do they call it? Tired dogs? My dogs are tired. My dogs are tired. Is that what they say? My dogs are tired. Anyways, uh, she has what seems to be somewhat comfortable shoes. I'm not going to just assume that those are comfortable. I've never worn shoes like that. One thing, again, I want to mention, and I mentioned this with the Omega Sentinel, is, again, the need to not put deep enough pegs on the bottoms of her feet. I guess you could say if they had made them any deeper, they would have gone straight through the toe and stuck out the other side. But really, again, if you're not going to include display stands, why make such unique pegs, peg holes in the undersides of her feet? I just want to show you, for example, here's a Marvel, here's a McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse stand. See the length of the peg? There is no way it fits properly into her foot. It just doesn't. It's just not deep enough. And that's the case with every display stand. I've yet to find really a display stand that I could use with so far these Marvel figures that we've had a look at. So that's a bit of a gripe as well. But she does come with, like I said, swappable options available. She comes with these lips, for example. Um, again, I, far be it from me to really pinpoint and find flaws in somebody's makeup application, but... At least these ones are a little bit better, but like the corners of the lips don't quite jive with where the lipstick is going. Am I the only one that sees this? Am I the only one that even cares about this? Like I said, it doesn't look as bad on this one as it does on this. <laughs> That's all I can look at right now. But to go ahead and swap out the heads, all you're going to want to do, be careful of the glasses, just wiggle the head off the ball joint and replace it with this head sculpt right here. I guess technically I probably could have removed the jacket while I was at it, but... She does have this swappable head, and then we can go ahead from there and just remove the arms. You know what? I'm going to take the head off because I know I'm going to have to deal with it later. Go ahead and remove the arms. Take off the one and go ahead and remove the other. Take off the other. There we go. And then from there, you can literally just take the jacket off. How about that? And we can go ahead and put the 
head sculpt back on. And sometimes with these bowl joints, they don't properly hold the head. And as quickly as you think you got it in place, boy, that looks awkward. She's got no arms whatsoever. Um, you start moving the head and the head just pops right off. Can you imagine if I just finished off the rest of this review with no arms in her torso? I won't do that. Let's go ahead and replace the arms. Again, making sure we've got the right side going on here. Here we go. Pop that on the one side. I did do it. Did I do it the right way? I did do it the right way. There we go. And then do the same thing on the other side. Oh, actually, you know what? One thing we did leave off. Maybe that was one of the reasons why the head wasn't properly in place. There's also a little scarf she comes included with as well. There we go. Get the full look going. The benefit, at least, of having the scarf as a separate piece is that if you want to decide for yourself that you don't want more to necessarily have the scarf, just leave it off. You don't have to put it on there. Nobody's saying you have to. And you've got Moira now with the alternate look. The only thing I would say, and it's only just chalked up to the way that she's articulated, is that she looks very assembled. Is that the word I want to be using? She looks very like, there looks like just it's parts of bodies attached to her where there's no, you know, there's no seamless, you know, continuation of the torso. It's just the nature, unfortunately, of the beast. Sorry, more, I'm not calling you a beast, but there's just really no way around that. It's just the way that she's assembled. But I like this look. I don't know if I would necessarily display her like this. I guess it would just depend on the diorama that I've got planned out. If I want her going out on the town, action-packed adventure maybe in store for her future, maybe I would go with maybe this look rather than the look that she had before with the lab jacket. And really, in the end, she's still the same Jenny from the block. Well, more of McTaggart from the block. Okay, that was a bad joke because she looked a little bit like J-Lo. <laughs> Maureen McTaggart has had different looks over the years in the comics, so of course, hard-pressed, I'm sure Hasbro would be to come up with one and only one way of displaying the figure. So instead, they give you two ways of displaying the figure. You can either display her in the casual outfit like I've got here in Final Looks, and then in the town with the ladies or fighting for mutant kind. Probably the latter one I would imagine would be a little bit more important. Or you can revert her back to the way she came out of the plastic prison, lab coat wearing Moira McTaggart. I do appreciate the fact that she does have the removable jacket and matching sleeves. You don't see that too often. So you can actually change her looks out drastically. You know, it's interesting though, if you take the way she looks right now, you remove the J-Lo head sculpt, couldn't resist, and you remove the scarf and swap it out with the head sculpt that has the glasses. She does bear some a striking resemblance to Velma from Scooby-Doo. I'm sure I'm not the only one that thought that. And now I'm looking at really at the back of the packaging and the rest of the characters that make up the Tri-Sentinel wave. Well, Marvel Girl could easily fill in for Daphne. Cyclops, I think, could pull off a pretty good-looking Fred. That leaves us just with Shaggy. Well, we got Wolverine. That's the whole Mystery Incorporated. Minus, of course, Scooby-Doo. Well, we got Charles Xavier. We've got the whole gang already. Can you imagine how quick of an episode it would be if Charles Xavier was Scooby-Doo? Well, it's the gardener. Well, how do you know that? Because I'm Charles Xavier. Anyways, though, looking at more McTaggart, the one thing I will say, and I joked about this a lot in this review, is as quickly as she is to save mutant kind, she can't seem to save her lips from the trials of dealing with that lipstick. I just want to tell you, I'm not somebody that is an expert at applying lipstick. I certainly hope I wouldn't be. But I will tell you, stop at the lips. Don't go putting and painting your lips past that point. Because you're not fooling anybody. You're not going to be telling anybody that you have fuller lips. What you're telling other people is that you don't know how to apply lipstick properly. It was a public service announcement from this humbled reviewer. Uh, more in McTaggart, though, I do appreciate the fact, I know jokingly aside, and I joked a lot about in this final looks of this figure, but you know, one thing I do appreciate about this figure is that, in fact, she does have two ways of displaying her. And if you really wanted to, yeah, you could pick up more McTaggarts, swap out the heads with other heads that you have in your collection, and you could really have an entire group of lab assistants. Granted, they would, yes, be wearing all the exact same elf outfits. A very tight company that is. Not only do you have to wear the exact same lab jack, which would be expected, but you have to wear the same shoes, same skirt, and same shirt. But you could at least pull off having multiple lab assistants, or I guess you could even use the lab jacket and the lab sleeves with other figures, providing, of course, it would look natural to have them wearing lab jackets. I appreciate things like that. Because again, like, you either can swap the figure out and change out the looks on just this figure, but it's also thinking outside the box. You can essentially army build more McTaggarts. Is anybody going to be really buying like five or six Moira McTaggarts simply just so they can have multiple lab assistants? I'm sure there will be. There's probably people out there that are doing things like that. Maybe the same people that are painting their lips past the point of where the lips should stop. Just don't do that. You're not fooling anybody. It just look you look like a clown. I don't, I don't want to be mean about it, but you, you look like a clown. With that being said, what do you guys think of Moira McTaggart 
She does look a lot like Velma from Scooby-Doo, doesn't she? If you also have picked up this figure, let me know. Or actually, you know what? If you've been picking up this wave, what do you think of these figures so far? I know we're sort of really early into this. I mean, we're only technically two figures into this wave. There's still a long way to go. So, I mean, really, there's still a lot of Tri-Sentinel to be building. But I am looking forward to it because that Tri-Sentinel looks awfully sick. If you are new to this channel and you're liking all the content you're seeing, enjoying the little jokes that we like to sprinkle in there from time to time, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and yeah, come back to this channel. Not only do we have snacks aplenty, but of course, we're all also going to be looking at the rest of the Tri-Sentinel wave. So if you're a big fan of this particular figure and just enjoying the fact that now we're going back and doing more Marvel Legends on this channel, by all means, keep your peepers peeled because there's going to be a lot coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.